So this is going to be the third video in a three-part series on building a Dockerized PostgreSQL environment. For part one, we focused on the initial setup. Part two, we went over a little deeper uh, in the compose file to differentiate authentication between a super user and a Docker user. And for part three, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're actually going to work off of the AdventureWorks for Postgres repo to see a use case of using a Dockerized Postgres environment to stage some training and uh, learning data using the AdventureWorks data set. Now, this isn't my repo. Uh, we're going to be cloning it and working off of it. So if if you're completely new to Docker and Postgres, you might want to go back and watch parts one and two. But if you're here specifically for uh, going through AdventureWorks, then you should be good with just this video. So I've cloned the repo and taking a quick look through the readme, we can see here that there's a section on using with Docker. And great, so it says you can spin up a new database using Docker with Docker Compose up. But you will need to rename the AdventureWorks 2014 OLTP script archive to AdventureWorks uh, using underscore. So they're just asking us to rename it using uh, Snake Key, so that's fine. Um, you can download the data set from here. There's a link. So let's go ahead and start with that. I've downloaded the zip file here, and I'm just going to copy the new name that we want and go ahead and rename it. And here we've got our new file. So I've gone ahead and renamed the file. Uh, so let's go ahead and spin up our containers. The Docker Compose file is very similar to the one that we were working off previously. You'll note that the build is referencing the current path. What this means is that we're not going to be pulling directly from Docker Hub. We're going to be creating our own image based on an upstream image which comes from Docker Hub. So this is the same Postgres image that we were using before. And now instead of uh, copying our files using volumes in Docker Compose, we're going to be uh, we're using the explicit copy commands here in the Docker file itself. So what this is going to do, you can pretty much just follow along the commands here. It's going to copy over some installation scripts. It's going to unzip the uh, AdventureWorks dataset tarball. It's going to run a Ruby script to update the CSVs to work with Postgres. And then it's going to go ahead and this should already look familiar to you. Remember that this is the directory where we can put any initialization scripts on our image. So let's go ahead and see what it did. We can copy the, I'm going to make this a little bigger. Let's try that again. We can copy the container name. Like I'm missing the A here. And we can check the logs. And we can see here that it's ready to accept connections. And if we scroll up, we see here is a list of all of the schemas that it created. So there's a person schema, a human resources schema, production schema, and so on. And now how do we connect to this database? So you saw here that there's an install.sh. And again, you're probably, probably familiar with this uh, syntax. Uh, we used a very similar script in uh, part one and two of this video series to create uh, a Docker user. And uh, you can see here that we're creating a Docker user, but we're not setting a password. So remember that because that's uh, gonna, we're gonna hit a problem later. Uh, but as for the user, we do have a Postgres user here and a Postgres password. So we should be able to connect as the Postgres user for starters. So what we're going to do next is we're going to connect as a Postgres user, uh, query the uh, query some tables, and then we're going to try to connect as the Docker user and see what happens. So for this video, in order to connect, I'm actually going to use a different extension from the previous videos. Uh, I'm going to use SQL 
tools and there will be a link to install that in the description but i'm going to go ahead and do sql tools again we're doing command shift t in order to open commands and we're going to do uh add new connection here and it's going to ask me to select the driver i'm going to select postgres and then for connection name i'm just going to do adventureworks no need for a connection group server and port that's correct server address and port are already set to localhost and 5432 now our database um, this is mandatory our database is going to be adventureworks and it looks like i made a typo here our database is going to be adventureworks our username is going to be postgres password it's going to ask on connect and let's see what happens next all right so we're going to test the connection and it looks like it works and then we're going to save connection and it's going to save it to our dot vs code settings here and then from then all we need to do is connect so we've got our connection ready i'm going to save this file first and then i am going to write a short query to get a list of tables that were created by the initialization script so this is going to be select star from information schema tables where table schema is equal to person i remember seeing that from the log so we can uh, click select log and run on active connection and there we have our results so this is the database name this is the schema name and these are all the table names that belong to the person schema Now we've tested authentication using the super user. So I'm going to save this file and I'm going to go ahead and create a new connection. And this one is going to be for the Docker user. So this is going to be AdventureWorks Docker. Everything is going to be identical. Only the username is going to be Docker now. And let's leave password ask on connect and see what happens. Go ahead, scroll to the bottom. Let me make sure we've got all parameters set. That looks good. I'm gonna scroll to the bottom and test connection. And it's prompting me for a password. I'm gonna hit enter. And it says password not provided. I'll just put in some random characters, see what happens. And it's failed, probably due to password authentication. I remember the Docker user doesn't actually have a password set. So let's scroll up and instead of a password, use empty password. And let's test again. And again, it is failing on, it is failing to connect uh, because the user Docker has no password assigned. All right, so in the next step, we are gonna try to remediate that. So going back to our Docker Compose file, we can see that we're setting a password for the Postgres super user but what about for the Docker user? And we can do the same thing that we did in the last video. We can just do Docker password is equal to, again, uh, in order to avoid passwords, uh, in order to avoid setting passwords in the compose file, we'll set it to an environment variable. And then we will export an environment variable called Docker password, and we'll just set that to Docker. Now there's one more thing that we need to do. If you remember the prior video, we go to our install that sh script and we add the with password argument here and pass Docker password as an environment variable. So now when this installed on sh runs, it should create the Docker user with the Docker password. Lastly, we have this psql command at the end here we are actually going to execute this command as the Docker user instead of the Postgres users. We'll do username Docker. And the reason we do that is because this grant all privileges on database doesn't actually uh, drill down to the schema level. So an easy way to get around this is by having the Docker user create uh, all of the schemas and tables. So to backtrack, where we left off was attempting a connection. 
uh, using the Docker user. We had used we had set use password to use empty password, and we were getting a failure. So we're gonna go ahead and fix this. We're gonna do ask on connect, pass connection. I'm just gonna start uh, with an empty string. We'll see what happens. Password not provided. Okay, great. Start with some random characters. It should give us an incorrect password error. And down here we see password does not match. So that's good. And let's try one more time and this time use the actual password and we get a successful connection. So save the connection and then go ahead and connect now. And just to confirm we're using the user um, that we want. Let's just do select current user and we'll go ahead and run on active connection and the current user is docker and then finally let's try to rerun the query from earlier let's save this file and then copy and paste this query and let's check that out and then we've got our tables here another thing that we can do is we can go to this databases editor which will give us uh, some more info about the schemas uh, and the tables that we have access to here. So just to recap what we did here is we cloned the AdventureWorks for Postgres database and we first accessed it as the super user. That worked fine. But of course, generally you don't want to be connecting to a database as the super user. So we went ahead and we utilized the Postgres user that was actually created for us in this install, install.sh script, but it didn't have a password, so we weren't able to connect. So then we added a password to both the shell script, we executed the DDL using that Docker user, and then we added the password to the compose file here. So that's it for this video. This concludes the three part series that we did on using a Dockerized Postgres database. Again, please like and subscribe if you found this useful and informative. And if you have any questions, please do leave a comment.